Hey guys, it's Bree and welcome to my channel, Just Breezy. If you're new here, I would love for you to become a subscriber. Just be sure you hit that bell for notifications because I don't want you to miss out. We upload weekly content to spread joy and connect to others because like we say, life isn't always just breezy, but together it could be a little easier. So for this vlog, what I wanted to do was take some of the questions that have been coming up in the comment section of my mental health vlogs and videos and just address some things that have come up in conversation with my friends and family. I have to say, even though 2021 is just like really shaping up to be quite the year, um, my mental health, believe it or not, is like in check. It really is, you know, there are things going on in the world that obviously I'm not oblivious to, um, but I know in the past, without medication, my anxiety would be through the roof. Um, I know my depression would have me, especially this time of year, in a hole, and I don't feel either one of those things. Um, doesn't mean I'm void of emotion or negative feelings. I definitely get anxious at times and feel sadness about things, um, but, Basically, the, the imbalance that was going on feels balanced. You know, I can have emotion without feeling despair. You know, so um, yeah, for an update, I'm, I would say, doing pretty good. Right now, I am taking a Fexor, and I'm on 37.5 milligrams of that. I was, I started out on Lexapro, and I've made some videos about that, and the Lexapro was amazing really amazing for my anxiety. So why did I switch? Well, I talk about on some other vlogs how I struggle, and I will actually say suffer, I've talked about that word suffering, but I have suffered with depression, with seasonal depression. So when that started to kind of rear its ugly head back in the fall, I said to my doctor, you know, my anxiety is under control, but my depression isn't. So we discussed switching over to Effexor because that would target my anxiety and depression, which is why I didn't need the Lexapro anymore. So for right now, that's what I'm taking and it's doing the trick. 100%, yes. I was terrified. I mean, forget about fearful, I was terrified. And for me, my fear really stemmed from two major places. One was that I was convinced, I, I created this narrative in my head, that if I start a prescription medication, that I was gonna become a drug addict. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, in my family, we have a history of addiction. So in my mind, I thought, well, if I needed to start a controlled substance, there was no way that I was going to be able to take that in a safe manner because I felt like, you know, I was just going to sort of follow suit with things that I've seen play out for other people in my family. Um, my other fear was, how is this going to change me? You know, um, I didn't want to be a zombie. I didn't want to be um, tired all the time. I didn't want to be this different version of myself. Um, but honestly, <laughs> I needed to be a different version of myself. You know, I needed to be somebody that was more balanced in how I was feeling. I needed to be somebody who didn't feel like I was drowning in my emotions and that I was so short fused all the time and yelling and waking up at like an eight out of 10 and, and everything was bothering me and making me feel anxious. And I needed to be a different version of myself, a better version of myself. Now, one thing I've realized about fear is that oftentimes fear is just unanswered questions. You know, think about that. It's the what if, what if this happens? What if that happens? Because you don't have the answer to the what if or the, the, the not knowing the information about medication that makes you nervous. How is this gonna change me? What about the long-term effects? So for me, what I found really helped with my fear fear was having a conversation with a friend that I trusted who I knew was taking medication and who felt um, open and honest enough with me to share her experience. Um, the other thing that really helped me was having a conversation with my doctor. You know, for so long I was like, I can't talk to my doctor about this. Well, this is what they go to school for, you know? So once I spoke to my doctor and got my questions answered, the fear of the unknown started to lift. I have to tell you, for years, I experienced that. 
you know, I had it in my head that the, the opinion of the people around me was so much more important than me being open and honest. I didn't have any value on my own happiness. I was putting more value in the opinions of others than I was in what I needed. You know, for so long I was afraid to say to my husband, who I trust and love and who's a kind and wonderful man, I was afraid to say, you know, I'm really struggling. Something isn't right. This goes beyond just being a frustrated mom or, you know, feeling sad here and there. I was so afraid to say anything because I didn't want to come across as, I don't know, being less than, being unbalanced, being looked at as crazy. You know, I wouldn't talk to my family about it. And with my doctor, I was just, I don't, I don't know. I was afraid of like what that would make me seem like. And I didn't even know how to have the conversation. So I, I really got inside my own head and silently suffered with it for much longer than I needed to. And then I got to a point where I said, I need to start really reevaluating, really reprioritizing, really, you know, saying to myself, why am I putting so much value on what everybody else is going to think? Because if I share with others that I'm struggling and they judge me on that, that says so much more about who they are than who I am. And then I started to realize that my value on, on things and people and experiences needed to shift back onto myself. You know, it's, it might sound cheesy to say that, you know, you need to love yourself for, you do, you need to love yourself first. You need to realize that your happiness, your mental health, your well being, your quality of life is so much more important than what anybody else thinks about what you're gonna do to get that for yourself. So once I started doing that, once I started talking about it, once I started sharing it, once I started having open and honest conversations, that fear of judgment didn't have such control over me. So my suggestion for anybody that wants to take it is that you find that person, whether it's your therapist, your doctor, a friend, your, your spouse, you know, your significant other, that person that you can trust and feel comfortable and say, I'm really, really struggling and just start to talk about it. I promise you, once you start to get that out, it's like letting out the toxicity that's sort of crippling you inside. For me with Lexapro, the one thing I experienced in the beginning was a little bit of tiredness. It wasn't any type of like extreme fatigue that got in the way of me functioning where I couldn't drive or, you know, couldn't take care of my children. I was just, I was a little bit more tired in the beginning. That went away pretty quickly. With the effect sore, I will say that a side effect that I had that was definitely more concerning um, was the only way I can describe it is that I was more aware of my, of my nerves. I know that sounds bizarre, but like... I could feel like you know, these occasional little jolts, little synapses. Um, I don't know if I'm even describing it correctly because it's hard to kind of put words to the feeling. Um, but what I did was I called my doctor. I didn't sit with it. I didn't start Googling it to scare the crap out of myself. I called my doctor. And when he called back, I said, okay, this is what I'm feeling. He had me come in. He did a preliminary uh, neurological test just to check reflexes and all that to make sure it wasn't something else. And after we had talked some more, he said, you know what? I want you to keep an eye on this for another week or two. If it still, you know, is happening or getting worse, call me immediately and we'll have blood work done. Thankfully, it went away and we were able to, you know, kind of chalk it up to a side effect of my body sort of acclimating to the medication adjustment. Um, and I haven't had it since, but that, I will say that was a little like, oh, what's going on in my body? Um, but one thing with side effects that I, I've said to friends, you know, and family is just keep a little pad of paper, a journal, write things down, write your experiences, what you're feeling, questions you have, because when you get your doctor on the phone, you finally get them a call back, um, you want to be able to say, okay, here are the things that are going on. Here's the questions that I have and make sure that you have that answer. I was thinking, you know, before I had my prescription, oh, do I have to go to a psychiatrist? Do I have to go to like some sort of specialist? And really, I just went to my primary care physician. The only reason why I knew that was because a friend of mine told me that's how she got her anxiety medication. Now, what happened was, and I'm sure other people experienced this too, I went to make the phone call and I hung up because I was like, what do I say? How do I make this appointment? What, what am I asking for? So when I finally had the courage to call, I simply said to the girl who was making the appointment, you know, when she was like, why do you need to come in? You know, what's wrong? Why aren't you feeling well? 
I said, um, I'm struggling with my mental health and I need to talk to my doctor about it. That's it, period, end sentence. She said, okay, no problem. Let's make your appointment. When we made the appointment, she said, I hope you feel better, and that was it. You know, I had this whole narrative in my head that I needed to describe everything to the person on the phone and you know, have this big conversation. They don't wanna have that. They just wanna know, what do you need? You know, what's the appointment for? Um, so I went in, had the conversation with my doctor. I had things written down, questions that I had, concerns that I had, um, because I knew, you know, as soon as I would start talking, I'd start crying. Part of that was because I felt so relieved to finally be talking to a doctor. The other part is because I'm just a crier. And it really helped to have that piece of paper to say, wait a minute, okay, I forgot to ask you this. Um, and again, the more I spoke to the doctor, the more information I got, the less fearful I was because all those question marks in my head we're now being erased by actual information. So um, yeah, that's why I wound up being prescribed the medication was through my primary physician. Okay guys, well I hope you found this helpful. I hope I answered some of the questions that maybe you have uh, moving forward for your own experience. You know, like always, thank you so much for watching, for stopping by, liking, sharing, and commenting, all that good stuff. And if you have any other questions, if you have something that you wanna share about your own experience or you just feel like talking, you know, chatting in the comment section, feel free to do so. I try to answer all the comments, you know, in a timely manner, and I really enjoy connecting with others that might be going through similar experiences. So guys, thank you so much again, and we will chat again soon.